So this week, on Friday, it's an auspicious day. It's the disappearance day of two very great souls, right? Yes, but even not talk or Yes, Gadagar Pandit and Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur. Mm -hmm. So, Gadahar Pandit, of course, is shown there in the Panchasattva. Mm -hmm. He is the associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the Panchasattva, we have five features. We have Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the original personality of Godhead. Lord Nityananda is expansion of Lord of Krishna. And Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of the devotee. Right? So Nityananda is the expansion of Lord Chaitanya and Advaita is incarnation of devotee. And then Gadarha represents the internal potency. Gadarha is uh, expansion from Srimati Radharani. And Sri Vastakur is the marginal potency, Narada Muni. So Gadarha Pandit was a very lifelong associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They grew up together. When we go to Mayapur, you can see the home of Gadarha is very near to the home of the place where <coughs> Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears at the Yoga Peet and Gadarhar home. Gadarhar's home is just a short walk from there. So Gadarhar Pandit grew up with Lord Chaitanya and they were childhood friends. They, they went to the same school. Of course, in the beginning, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing his pastimes of being a scholar. He was Nimai Pandit, right? He wasn't Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That came later. Chaitanya was the name given when he took sannyas. But Nimai Pandit was one name by which he was. There were other names also, but Nimai. Vishwambar, one who maintains the universe. And then he was also, he's also known as Goranga, popular name. So Lord Chaitanya <coughs> associated with Gadarhar. And even people worship Gaur Gadarhar deities. If we go to Mayapur today, at the yoga peep, at the rear end of the yoga peep, there are deities of Gore and Gadarhar. These deities were worshipped by the wife of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And after the wife departed, then the deities were brought there into the temple at Mayapur. They're being worshipped there today. Gore and Gadarhar. Gorgadarhar deities are also in another place. If you go to Champahati, if you go on the Navadvip Parikrama, have you ever been Navadvip Parikrama? Yes, yes. You've been? Yes. Good. So on Navadvip Parikrama, we go every year to Champahati. Mm -hmm. Did you go on the English speaking one or the Hindi one? No, the English speaking one. Okay. So on the, every year, every party will visit Champahati. It's a very important place. And the deities of Gorgadarha are there. These deities are 500 years old. And they were worshipped by the younger brother of Gadarha Pandit. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, but, uh, oh, well, his name was uh, Prat. Oh. I forget. Anyway, the, the deities are big, very the big size, Gorgadarha. And they're very ancient, five hundred years old. They were discovered for us by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. He heard about them and he went there and 
they persuaded the people to give the deities. They brought them, made the temple in the place called Champahati. Champa means is referring to champaka flowers. And Hati means, you know the meaning, Hati? Market in Bengali. <laughs> it's again, I guess that's the Bengali huh? Champahati. It it, and 5,000 years ago, the gopis would come there to collect champaka flowers, to make garlands, to give to Radha and Krishna. Champaka flowers, they're very fragrant. They grow very easy. You get many flowers on a champaka tree. It's too cold here, though. To mm -hmm. You can't plant in here. Huh? You never get them here. No. But any, you know, places like uh, Taiwan, in India, you can take a branch, stick it in the ground, and a tree will come up. Mm -hmm. In a short time, a few years, you get a whole big tree. And there's many champaka trees around, and we usually will go out and collect the flowers from these trees. So champaka flowers uh, with a market became a marketplace there, and uh, so Gorgadhar her deities were there. Uh, Vanina, that was the name of the brother, Vanina. The younger brother of uh, Gadara was called Vanina, and he worshipped his older brother along with Lord Chaitanya, Gaur and Gadara deities. Who is Gadara? We said he is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. And Gora is, of course, combined form of Radha and Krishna. He is Krishna, but coming in the mood of Radha. Anyway, worship of Gorgadarhar is very elevated. We worship Gornitai. Worship of Gorgadarhar is more for the, the meditation aspect. But our Krishna conscious society, we are more dedicated to the preaching mood. Mm -hmm. And Gornitai, they represent that preaching mood. Lord Nityananda with Lord Chaitanya. They would preach, they would go and do sankirtan and do, do distribute Krishna consciousness. Anyway, Gadarhar Pandit uh, was a very nice soul, very gentle. He was a lifelong brahmachari, never married, you know, and uh, he was very austere and he wasn't from a wealthy family, you know, they were a poor family. So it happened one time, a famous uh, man uh, was coming to Navadvip, a man called Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Did you hear the name? Yes, Pundarik very Vidyanidhi. rich man. I was just listening to a story of Pundarik Vidyanidhi from Chaitanya Bhagavad today. Oh. I didn't even realize <laughs> really? the connection. No. You heard the story? Yeah. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Pundarik Vijaniri. So, let's see how much you remember. Pundarik Vijaniri was coming to Mayapur. So, they told Gadarhar, I think it was Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was always telling Pundarik, Pundarik, my, he would say, my, my father, my uncle, or something, he had some relationship, you know, he, and he, he knew Pundarik is a wonderful devotee of Lord Krishna. There's a place called Pundarik Dam. If you go to Bangladesh, now of course Bengal used to be one country, now it's divided, you know, East Bengal and West Bengal. West Bengal is part of India, so East Bengal is Bangladesh, but it's all Bengal actually. They, they speak the same Bengali. Bengali, right? Balo Achan. <laughs> I mean, Balo Achan. Hmm? Bengalis, they, they will always ask you, are you good? Are you happy? You know, like I say here. Like that. <laughs> so, Pundarik Vijaniri was having a big land. He was a wealthy man, a landowner. 
and he came to Navadvi. And so they told Gadarhar, a great devotee is coming to Navadvi, Pundarik Vijaniri. You must come and see him. You must come and hear from him. Right? When we come to see the sad, we don't, it's not for an eye exercise. It's for the ears. We have to use the ears, you know. It's hearing which is important. Just like when we go to Holy Dham, when you go to the Holy Dham, it's not to just see the Dham, but we go there to hear. We want to hear from the, the great souls who live there, right? When you went to Vrindavan, you heard from your spiritual teacher. You were hearing from him. We don't go to just see the important thing. The ears are important. It's the, uh, the ear exercise. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Now hear from me, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. Hmm? The seventh chapter, first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. It's an important verse. It's the beginning of Lord Krishna's description on Bhakti Yoga. And Prabhupada, Lord Krishna says, touch Srinu. The word Prabhupada said, very significant word, touch Srinu. Maya, huh? how does it go? Uh, anyway, touch Srinu, that hear from me. How by practicing yoga, you can know me in full, free from doubt. So practicing yoga, what is that yoga? Of course, it's the yoga of devotion. It's not just the stretching and the bending <laughs> or the pressing the nose, the pranayama. <laughs> you know? But it's the hearing, the, 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 the yoga of hearing, exercising our ears. To hear. So Pundarik Vijanidi came to Navadvip and Gadarhar thought, Oh, a great devotee is coming. I want to go and hear from him. I will go. But Gadarhar went and when he came there, it was a bit of a surprise to him because he was expecting to see a holy person. And Gadarhar was thinking, you know, people have this idea, what is a holy person? They think, holy person, somebody maybe should have a big beard, you know, long hair, you know, and red, red dress, you know, um, like that, you know, that kind of holy person. We say, sadhu, or baba, babaji, <laughs> you know, so there, you get, Many people like that, they, you know, they have the long hair and the beard and the powerful eyes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They'll control, can take control of you. So, uh, Gadarha thought he was going to see a sadhu like that. And when he came and saw Pundarik Vijanidi, it was a shock. It was a shock, right? Why was it a shock? You were very rich and uh, opulent. Yes. Like and his house. bed. He, he had such a cold, fancy bed. And he had a cold, uh, I think, a very... Old lace. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and he had... A spittoon. He had a spittoon for the... A spittoon for his pan. And he was yeah. sleeping in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> his hair was all nicely groomed. Yeah. And... On the table in front of him, there were many sherbet and namkins and, oh, you know, yes. you know mm -hmm. sweetmeats and different mm -hmm. things were there for the enjoyment of the tongue. <laughs> and Gadarha is coming in there and there's Gadarha, he's a brahmachari <laughs> and he's very austere and he sees this man, you know, and of course many rings on the fingers, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And the nails are also very nice, polished. 
And Gadara is saying, what? This is a sadhu? <laughs> what kind of sadhu is this? Yes. You know? So Gadarha was thinking, cannot be a sadhu. But then his friend Makunda was there. So Makunda Datta is one of the very intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya also. Just like when we sing Gora Arti in the evening, right? We mentioned about Makunda, how he sings that. What, how does it go? Sanjaya Mukunda Vashu Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Sanjaya Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Vasu they're all singing, singing sweetly. So Makunda was very expert in singing different slokas from scriptures. He could recite and he could sing beautiful songs also, but he could also sing different slokas and he could understand the mood of different people. Lord Chaitanya used to relish the association of Swarupa Damodar Goswami. Swarupa Damodar was the secretary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And whenever Lord Chaitanya would be in a particular mood, Swarupa Damodar would sing a song or quote a verse which was directly related to that mood, which would enhance Lord Chaitanya's ecstasy. And that is why he was always with Lord Chaitanya. Because Swarupa Damodar, he was the expansion of Lalita Saki, right? Yeah. And Lalita Saki, she's a very dear friend of Srimati Radharani. Yeah. And Lord Chaitanya wants to cultivate Radhabhav, the mood of Radharani, that love which Radharani has for Lord Krishna. So Lalita, she would help Radharani to increase her, her, her ecstasy and feelings of love for Krishna. And same way, Swarupa Damodar would recite verses to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So here is Gadarhar. He's sitting looking at Pundarik Vijanidhi and Pundarik Vijani, you know, somebody's got a peacock fan, they're fanning him, and someone else is on the other side with the chamara, you know, they're really, and he's sitting on the big seat, you know, and so Gadara this is a, this is a sadhu, you know, how can he be sadhu? So Gada, uh, Makunda could understand, so he recited a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam jagam saya payanad apya sadvi. He's re reciting this verse, famous verse in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a verse spoken by Uddhava to Lord Krishna. To Uddhava uh, came to get uh, what happened? He, Uddhava, Vidura came to meet Uddhava. Vidura was searching. He wanted to get more about Krishna, some love for Krishna. He came to Vrindavan. He met Uddhava. And Uddhava was telling him about Lord Krishna's pastime. So he was saying, Aho bakiyam stanakala kutam baki. Aho bakiyam. The, the the sister of Baka. You know Baka Sura? Yeah, demon. Yeah? Yeah. The, the demon. big big bird with a big beak. You know? And that bird Baka Sura, he swallowed Krishna at one point. He actually swallowed Krishna. Krishna went right inside him. Everyone died. But oh no, Krishna has been swallowed by this demon. But then Krishna came out. <laughs> because 
Lord Krishna is not an ordinary person. Baka had swallowed Krishna, but then Krishna came out and then Krishna fought with Baka and broke his beak, right, and killed him. Baka. So, oh, aho Bakiyam. But the, the sister of Baka, you know who the sister of Bakasura was? Putana. Putana. Yes, right, Putana. She had a brother as well. You know yes. her brother? Uh, there was one more, one more demon. Uh, Aga, no. Aga, yes. Agasura. Yes, Aga. Aga. Good family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Baka, Aga, Putana. <laughs> Quite a family. Let's make friends. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lord Krishna had accepted that uh, Opaki, Stana Kala Kutam, her breast was coated with poison, Kala, this poison was on her baka, Stana Kutam, that it, on her breast she put this deadly poison and her intention was to kill Krishna. And she'd gone to Mother Yashoda's home and picked up the baby and was putting her breast into the mouth of the baby. And of course, Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna bit her and sucked out her light air. Actually, Lord Krishna played a trick that when she picked him up, Putana became a, a little fearful because she understood this child is very powerful. He could destroy the whole universe. Anyway, Lord Krishna tricked her to give her more confidence. Lord Krishna closed his eye. He didn't look at her. Maybe he didn't want to see her face. <laughs> but actually, she, was, she came in a very attractive form. She was, ve she was not this big rakshasa. She, she disguised herself by her yogic powers. She'd taken on the dress of... Very beautiful young Very beautiful woman. young woman. A gopi. Oh, okay. She was a gopi. Oh. She came as a gopi. Oh, okay. One of the bridge bassy ladies, you know, they thought she was a gopi. She was, you know, just like a gopi, she came there. And they, oh, who are you? Where are you? <laughs> and that's how she could walk in there. She, that she was disguising herself as one of the people of Vrindavan. So they thought she was a gopi. She came in and everyone saw her and they thought, oh, what an attractive, beautiful young lady has come. And so everyone just let her come in. And when she picked up the baby, no one objected. And she's even feeding her breast to the baby. No one's objecting. And then Krishna, he knows and he bit, he bites. And he takes out the life air. And of course, when he does, then she screams, let me go. And then she was so in so much pain that she assumed her actual form as a rakshasi. How big was she? How many miles? Miles. 13. Huh? 13. 13. Yeah. Really? I, I thought it was eight. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you were. Anyway, huge, you know, many miles high. She took this huge farm and every wow. And oh, she, first of all, she rushed out of the house. She got out of the house and she had some, this huge farm and, you know, she fell down dead. And Lord Krishna's put. So the verse says, who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna, that he accepts this lady as his nurse. La begatim datri uchitam tanunyam. In the next life, huh? Oh, yeah, he yeah. transferred her from the body of the demon Rakshasi Putana. Mm -hmm. She went back to Goloka mm -hmm. to become one of his nurses there in Goloka. Not 
not like Mother Yashoda, of course, you know, Mother Yashoda, she is always Krishna's mother. But there are other nurses there to assist Mother Yashoda. So Putana got transferred there to that abode to be one of the assistants of Mother Yashoda. So she's so fortunate, you know, to go to the highest abode in the spiritual world. So Uddhava is saying, who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna? That this Rakshasi came to kill him with poison on her breast and he takes her and he sends her to Goloka to become one of his eternal servants there. And so when Gadar is, you know, Makunda is chanting this verse, Aho bhagiyam stanakala kutam jagam sayapayanadapya sadhi. He's chanting it so wonderfully. And Pundari Vijaniri is sitting there and he hears the verse and he immediately, he know, he can, immediately knows what's, oh, and he becomes stunned. And his bhava, his love for Krishna was aroused and he fell over, he fell on the ground and he rolled on the ground back and forth and he was shedding tears and his body was trembling, his hair was all standing on end, all different symptoms of ecstasy, of love of God. And he remained in that condition for several hours. And Gadara was there watching and he was like astounded that, oh, Gadarha could understand these were genuine symptoms of love of God. Sometimes you get people pretend, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you get people pretending they have love of God. But this was genuine symptoms. And he was really in ecstasy. And Gadarha was watching, he was thinking. Wow, he's a great devotee. He understood that this man must be such a great devotee. So he, he, he began to reflect. He said, I'm, he, he thought, I've been so offensive. I was thinking that he was a materialist. Gadarha was thinking, I, th I was thinking, I was looking only at the external features. I was not understanding his internal nature. So Gadarha understood, he thought, I have made offense. I've been, I'm guilty of an offensive mentality. I should not think so badly of him. So Gadarha thought about it and he thought that I should accept him as my guru. And so he, he came to Lord Chaitanya and he requested Lord Chaitanya, can you please give me permission that I can accept Gadarha, that I can accept Pundarik Vijanidhi as my spiritual teacher? And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, very nice. So that's very good. Yes, do it. And so he went to Pundarik Vijanidhi and Pundarik Vijanidhi, he, was, he had many disciples. So he said, yes, why not? You can become my disciple. So he initiated him on it one day. But it happened afterwards, Gadar had gone to Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas and they'd all gone to Puri. So Gadar also went with them. Wherever Lord Chaitanya went, Gadarha liked to go. So Gadarha followed Lord Chaitanya to Jagannath Puri. And it happened at one point that Gadarha somehow he lost the mantra which his guru had given him. His guru had initiated him and given him a mantra. Hare Krishna for the and his, his guru had initiated him and given the mantra. And somehow Gadarha had lost this mantra. He'd lost this mantra. 
And so he, he came to Lord Chaitanya and he asked Lord Chaitanya, could you give me, could you reinitiate me? I've forgotten the mantra my guru gave me. And Lord Chaitanya said, no, 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 I cannot do that. He said, you wait for your guru to come. When your guru comes, then he can reinitiate. And it happened. After some time, Pundarik Vijanini came there to Jagannath Puri, and at that time he reinitiated Gadara and gave him the mantra again. So Gadara used to live in Puri with Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya would come to Gadara every day and hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya liked to come to Gadara and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. And they would, Lord Chaitanya would like to hear, you know which passages Lord Chaitanya would like to hear? From the Bhagavatam? Prahlad. Prahlad and, and, and Dhruva, right. Prahlad and Dhruva. Those were the two pastimes that Lord Chaitanya liked to hear. Gadaha would read these pastimes again and again to Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya, at one point, he discovered a deity, a deity of Gopina. He dug it out from the ground. Jagannath Puri, the beach is there. And at one point, one day, Lord Chaitanya just started digging away the earth. And he brought out this big, humble deity. The deity had been there for a long time. So Lord Chaitanya brought the deity out and he gave it to Gadarha. He said, you should worship this deity. So Gadarha would do the worship. The deity is still being, wor being worshipped. If you go to Jagannath Puri, you can see the temple of Tot Tota Gopina. Oh, yeah. Tota. That is Gadarha Pada's deity, mm. Tota Gopina. So that's, uh, that's one temple I can get in. You know, I, I don't get into many temples because I'm not a Hindu, you know. I'm not... You know, they won't let me in the door. <laughs> in Jagannath Puri only, huh? huh? In Jagannath Puri, you mean? Jagannath Puri is yes. like that, but there are other temples really? also. Oh, yeah. In the world? Oh, Worldwide? yeah. Worldwide? Yeah. I thought only Jagannath Puri. No, so, no. Yes? Shakshi Gopal. Oh, Shakshi they won't Gopal. Let you in. Oh. No. Oh. And uh, even the Shiva, the big temple of Lord Shiva there in Bhubaneswar, mm. they won't let you in. Arisa is very orthodox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arisa mm -hmm. is quite orthodox. They won't let you in. But uh, usually other temples are okay. Like even South India, Trivandrum, you know, mm -hmm. and Tirupati, you can get in, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but Europeans, you know, mm -hmm. we won't get in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Tota Gopinath we get in. They allow people in. They're, they're, that's a Gaudiya temple. Mm -hmm. Yesterday a friend sent me a picture of Tota Gopinath dress as a butch. And she says, I don't know what the occasion is. They dress Tota Gopinath as Shusha Bhuj. Oh. I saw a picture yesterday. Oh. And the friend, the devoted friend who sent it to me, she says, I don't know why they do that. But Every so often they dress him and, you know, they put extra arms on him. Oh, really? I thought perhaps you know what the occasion is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they have, must be some occasion. The Sadbush form that is there. Of course, that was exhibited in Jagannath Puri. Lord Chaitanya showed Sadbush form to uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And to Ramananda Roy also in that. Well, Ramananda Roy, he showed the form of Radha and Krishna. Oh. Mm, but Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he showed the Sadhguru's form. Mm. Anyway, uh, Gadarhar was given the worship of this deity of Gopina. And he worshipped. And he was worshipping even in his old age. But it was becoming very difficult for him, mm -hmm. you know, to stretch up and put the crown on, put the ornaments on the deity. So at one point, the deity sat down. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's unusual. You don't see 
many deities where Krishna is sitting, mm -hmm. but Gopinath is sitting down cross-legged. Mm -hmm. And they say that he sat down to make it easier for Gadaha Pandit to serve the deity. And they say also uh, the Tota Gopinath temple, this is one of the places where they claim Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared there. And there's a mark actually on the leg of the Gopinath deity. There's a gold mark there on the leg. They say this is where Lord Chaitanya entered into the deity. So, <laughs> Gadarha Pandit had many pastimes with Lord Chaitanya. And Gadar had liked to follow Lord Chaitanya. And when Lord Chaitanya was going to South India, Gadar had wanted to go with him. But Lord Chaitanya told him, no, I'm not going to take you. But Gadar had wouldn't accept and he tried to follow Lord Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. He tried to follow Lord Chaitanya and eventually Lord Chaitanya got to a point, he just got in a boat, crossed the river and said goodbye to Gadarha. <laughs> he told Gadarha, he said, you've taken a vow to stay in Jagannath Puri. Gadarha had, had taken a vow, which is something called Shetra Sanyas, a vow to stay in the holy place. So Lord Chaitanya did not like people give up their vows. And Gadarha had also vowed to maintain the worship of the deity of Gopinath. So Lord Chaitanya was telling him, you should keep your vows. Lord Chaitanya liked to see the devotees to be very steady in their service. He didn't like to see people do one, give up one service and go and do something else. And, be, to, he didn't like to see them chop and change. Mm -hmm. He liked them to be steady in their service. So Lord Chaitanya gave that instruction to Gadara. And, and wasn't it that he also had, that Gadara also had to take care of the Chimata? Or was that somebody else? No, that mm -hmm. was, uh, was somebody else. Lord Chaitanya had a servant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a servant. The servant's name was the servant of Lord Chaitanya in the home of Sanchimata. Ishan. Hmm? Ishan. 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 That's it. Yes. Ishan Thakur. Yes. yes. Ishan. Ishan Thakur. My grandson's name. Yes. He, was, Ishan. he was a servant in yes. the home of Sanchimata. Taking. And it was Ishan who took some devotees on Parikram. Yes. So. Anyway, Gadarha Pandit stayed there in Jagannath Puri and he, he has met, his line is still there, the descendants coming in the succession, the cyclic succession through Gadarha Pandit. And they have a temple, they have temples there in Jagannath Puri. Mm -hmm. They're all descended, coming in the line through Gadar. Mm -hmm. So Friday is the disappearance of Gadar and it's also disappearance of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, of course, is the pioneer. Prabhupada described Bhaktivinoda Thakur as the pioneer in spreading Krishna consciousness in the Western world. Because it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur who sent books to the Western world. And even in the year of Srila Prabhupada's birth, 1896, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent books to universities in the USA and Canada. As well as in, and devotees later in the 1960s and so on, the devotees went to those universities and they found the books. Mm. The same books which Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent, they were there, still there in the library. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur always worked very hard to establish the Krishna consciousness movement. Of course, he 
He wrote so many wonderful songs which we sing. He wrote one set of books, set of poems called Sharanagati. Yes. Right? Song, the song six book. items of surrender. Mm -hmm. And the song, many songs for each of the six items of surrender. And there's, there's that one song which we sing. Shuddha Bhakta Charana Renu Bhajana Anukula Bhakta Seva Paramasiddhi Premalati Karamula This is a song about, what's the item? Hmm? Six items of surrender. Six items of surrender. Anuko yasya sankalpa, pratiko yasya varjana. Accept everything favorable oh. for devotional service and, and reject, reject what is favorable. not favorable. And then know that only Krishna can protect us. Only Krishna can maintain us. Have no desire other than Krishna's desire. And we should always be These are the six items of surrender. So Bhakti Thakur wrote on each one of the six items. And some of the songs are there in our Vaishnava song book. Mm -hmm. If you go to Beng Bangladesh, in Bangladesh I'm told that in the villages there many people know all the songs. They sing all the songs. Mm -hmm. And of course there are other songs by people like Naratam Das Thakur. And they're also very popular too. Mm -hmm. Bengali people, they love kirtan. They like to sing all these different songs. Because the songs are in their language. Mm -hmm. That makes a difference, you know. And Prabhupada said, when we sing these songs, we should know the meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't just sing the song. What does it mean? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We have to, we have to know. And that's why Prabhupada also would give purports to each of the songs. He would explain the significance of the different songs. Just like that song, Shuddha Bhakita. It's about accepting items which are favorable for devotional service. Right? What is favorable for devotional service? Shuddha Bhakita Charanarini. Vajana Anuku. Bhakita Seva Paramasiddhi Premalati Karamo. The dust of the feet of the devotee. Mm -hmm. Very favorable to devotional service. And the association of the devotee. Uh, the remnants of their food. Mm -hmm. The water which has washed their feet, these things. This is but it's meant pure devotees, huh? Yes. No, not normal devotees. <laughs> the, the, the water they, from their feet, better not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these things are... But anyway, these things are for the people, you know. People who have faith in the, the devotee. Mm -hmm. We do like Narada Muni. He accepted the remnants the from sages. the Bhaktivedantas who came to his home. And he had faith in them. Mm -hmm. Faith. If you have faith in the period, then okay. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was so industrious. He har hardly slept. He's described as the seventh Goswami, right? We have the six Goswamis. Mm -hmm. are, are they on the altar there? Have you got a picture of the six Goswamis? Yeah, at the they end of the, the Parampara. Is also there. Yeah, at the end of the Parampara, after Gorkishor Das Babaji's, after Jagannath Das Babaji's picture, yes. then the six yes. Goswamis are there. Yes. Rupa Sanatan, Bhata Raghunath, Sri Jiva, Gopal oh, wow. Bhata, Dasa Raghunath. Right, six Goswamis, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, seventh Goswami. Oh, the seventh Goswami. 
But Bhaktivinoda Thakur was not a Goswami in the sense that he was a renunciate. In that. He was, well, he was renounced, but not in the sense like he wasn't a Babaji. He didn't take, initially anyway, he didn't take the Babaji dress. He was a Grihastha. Yeah. And he had a big, a large family. Mm -hmm. And he trained them all to be devotees. He brought them all up in Krishna consciousness. And the result was, of course, one of the children was Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Yes, right. Prabhupada's disciple, Prabhupada's guru. Yes. Uh, so Prabhupada's spiritual master come, came from the family, a seminal family of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he preached. He not only wrote books, but he also preached himself. He went out preaching, he went to the villages. Because in his time, it was much more rural. It, you know, there were no, the cities were not developed like they are today. Nowadays, the villages are not so populated. But in the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, most of the people were all living in the village. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur would go to the villages and he would do programs. And they would have kirtan and he would give class and then distribute some prasada. And in this way he was preaching. And he made many devotees. And of course, not only did he preach, he was writing books and he was also searching out the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. Because in the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, people were thinking that the birthplace of Mahaprabhu was over in Navadvi, mm -hmm. across the Ganga from Mayapur. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur thought, how could it be there? Because there were so many signs that the birthplace had to be near to landmarks. There were landmarks like the Chankazi Samadhi, the tomb of the Chankazi. That has been there for 500 years. Nobody can change that. Mm -hmm. That was a, And that was known to be near to the home, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So from things like that, the, 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 the birthplace of oh, the, the Samadhi of the Chankazi, and then other things, of course, his attention had been brought to Mayapur. He had built his home in Swarup Ganj. Swarup Ganj is on the other side of Mayapur, across the Jalangi. Mm. From the, across the Jalangi River is Swarup Ganj. No, is it Swarup Ganj? I don't know. I know the Jalangi River, but I don't know. Anyway, he was living across the Jalangi. There's a, a village there. And his house is there, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house, where he lived and where he wrote his books and where he, he, was, he was reflecting on how to establish the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, while he was staying there in his house, he had a, a rooftop and he used to sometimes sit on the roof and chant. And from the rooftop he could see this glowing effulgence over in Mayapur. And he wondered what was going on, what was happening, why it was so effulgent there. Again and again he could see this light over there. So he decided he must go and investigate. And he went over there and he found a lot of tulsis. And then he was digging around they found a deity and that deity was the deity of Lord Chaitanya's father, Jagannath Mishra. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur then brought Jagannath Das Babaji. Mm -hmm. He brought Jagannath Das Babaji there and Jagannath Das Babaji at that time he was over a hundred years old. So they had to, he had to be carried in a basket and they brought him there but when Jagannath Das Babaji came there, he jumped up in the air. He was so happy. 
He said, yes, this is the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So Jagannath Das Babaji confirmed that this was the actual site. So then Bhakti Vinod Thakur, because they had built a temple over in Navadweep on the other side of the Ganga. And now this person, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, is coming along and he's saying, oh, it's not there, it's here. So he had to preach, he had to tell people, actually, this is the birthplace. Mm -hmm. And he had to go and collect money to build a temple. Mm -hmm. Because he was, he would have some money, but he had to, he really, to build a temple would cost some money. So he was go he said, I'm willing to go and beg up one rupee from every gentleman in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. Well, in those days, one rupee was more money. You know? well, now today, one rupee is not. It's nothing, but in those days one rupee was a lot. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur built the temple there at the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later on, you know, he got old, the body, his body deteriorate, deteriorated in health, and he was tell he told the devotee, buy a horse, put me on the horse and take me for preaching. There were no cars. <laughs> there was no cars. So he said, just buy a horse and take me out for preaching. That will be my pleasure. Mm -hmm. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur departed from the world. I think it was in Jagannath Puri when he actually departed. But they brought his body back to Mayapur. They made a samadhi there at Mayapur, at, at, across, the, across the Ganga. His house is there. Have you been there? No. no? It's a nice place, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house. And it's just around the corner from a place called Swarup. Um, so, what's that? So, Rabi Kunj. So, Rabi Kunj. Surabi Kunj, where Surabi Kal appears. And that place is also the headquarters of Lord Nityananda's Namhata. Lord Nityananda's Namhata originates from that place. And it was at that place Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote several books also. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur did so much to help us establish this Krishna Consciousness Movement. He, he preached so much. At one point, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wanted to print one book. This book was about the confidential pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had read this book and he thought, oh, this book is so wonderful. I want to print this book. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, all right, you can print one copy. Yes. And he said, why only one copy? He said, because you're the only person who is qualified to understand and to appreciate this book. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur was like that. He was quite strict, you know, he knew. He knew how to handle even a powerful personality like Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. But he told them, you print one book for yourself. Mm -hmm. Another time, Bhakti Thakur, you see, he had been the magistrate at Jagannath Puri in charge of the temple there. And he checked all the accounts and he checked it and he found out there was some misappropriation of funds. The king of Puri, the king of Puri had been taking money from the temple. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur, because he was in charge of the temple, he told the king of Puri, you have to repay this money. So the king was very angry. The king decided he would put a curse on Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So the king, he hired many brahmanas to come and do a big yagya. And the idea of the yagya was that they were going to kill Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So they did this big yagya, and at the end of the month, 
the king's own son died. No, not Maharaj. This is the time of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Maharaj Prataparudra is Lord Chaitanya's time, right? So this was like Bhakti Vinod Thakur's time, which is 200 years ago. So uh, another incident was there was this one man, what was his name? That yogi with a, he had long oh, yeah. hair. Yeah. 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 And fire was coming out yeah, of his yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. And he was claiming to be an incarnation of Vishnu. Vishnu. Hmm. And he had associates. One said he was Shiva and one <coughs> said he was Brahma. And they were very degraded people. They were debauchees, but they became very powerful. And they influenced many people. They had many followers. Mm -hmm. So the government were very worried about him, so they requested Bhaktivinoda Thakur to do something about it. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur heard how this man was claiming that he was an incarnation of God. So he went with soldiers and they arrested him and they took that man to jail. So this man, he, he cursed Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said, you and all your family will die. And the man was quite powerful. He had mystic power. And so it happened that some of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's family, they got sick. Mm -hmm. And even Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he also got fever. But he refused to stop. He said, no, this man has to be punished. He said, whatever happens, whoever may die, let them die. But this man has to be punished. He's a rascal number one. Mm -hmm. And we cannot let him go free. So even Bhaktivinoda, because this yogi, when he got arrested by the police, he began fasting. So he was fasting for many days. And, you know, these yogis, they have the long hair, they get their power from their hair, you see, they have long hair. Oh. And then he was fasting, so to give him more power, you see. And it was affecting mm -hmm. Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his family, in different members of his family were all ill. And they told Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you better let him go, drop the case, let him go free. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, no, he has to be punished. And so they went to court and they had the court case and they heard everything. And the judge sentenced him to jail, to hard labor in prison. And then just at that time, one man came with big scissors and they cut all of his hair. <laughs> and when they cut off all of his hair, he yeah, fell down on the ground. He was very, he was totally ruined. And when he went to prison, he drank poison, committed suicide. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, did the, he was so, so righteous and so powerful, he could fight against all these evil elements to establish the proper principles of religion. Mm. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur wanted so much to see Krishna consciousness distributed around the world. And he predicted that one day we would see all different nationalities there in Mayapur chanting the holy name. And he predicted also there would be a big temple would also come up in Mayapur. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur is the pioneer of this Krishna consciousness. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone? Yes, Prabhu? Uh, Maharaj, uh, you started your lecture with... <coughs> it's, a, it's a technical question. You were saying these terms like expansion, incarnation, uh, inner potency, and then I read the Bhagavad Gita, I also read about, what is it, plenary portion or a portion of the plenary portion. I'm a bit confused. When do you use the one and the other? Is there a difference? Could you elaborate a bit more on that? It's more a technical, yeah. just yeah. for my understanding. Incarnation, expansion, plenary yeah. for dimensions mm -hmm. of 
Well, that's the difference between Advaita Acharya and, Gada and uh, Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda is the expansion and Advaita Acharya is the incarnation. Of, of the devotee, yeah, of, the, of the Supreme Lord, the incarnation of the Lord and the expansion of the Lord. But is there, is there a difference in quality? When do you use expansion and when do you use incarnation in general? Well, expansion like Lord Nityananda is not different from Lord Chaitanya. Lord Balaram is the expansion of Lord Krishna. They're not different. Only difference between Krishna and Balaram is in the color. But Lord Balaram is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? And incarnation is something else. Yeah, incarnations, they come usually, they all come from uh, Shirodaka Shai Vishnu usually. And within each universe, the incarnations, they come from Shirodaka Shai Vishnu. They are Purusha avatars. There are, there's Shirodaka Shai Vishnu who resides in the, milk, in the middle of the milk ocean on Sweet Adweet. And when do you use a plenary portion of? When, when do you do you use a plenary that? portion? No, what? When? Plenary. I mean, the portion of <laughs> a portion of that personality. Plenary. Yeah. And presenting one has some aspects of that person. Not all, not everything. Just like if you have a plenary session, you know, if you're having a seminar, some will have a plenary session. They'll present some main points. So highlighting some aspect, like the four Kumaras, you know, the transcendental knowledge, Nara, Narayan, Rishi, highlighting renunciation, Kapila, philosophy, Sankhya, Yoga. The different incarnations highlight different aspects. Mm -hmm. Yes? When we say the Prem Advani prayers, then we say, we fall back to Nath Thakur's name, Satchitananda. Satchitananda. Why? Jai Om Vishnu Parata. Satchitananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Right? Satchitananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Well, that's the name which was given to him by the oh, devotee. Oh. Yeah. Name which was given to him by the devotee. And in relation to Pramodvani prayers, I have one more question. It's like you say, Vishnu Bhaktara Mahamsa, Privraja Vichari. Mm. Um, so Bhakti, you say Bhakti Nata Kur, you know, he sends books to McGill in Canada. He sends McGill him, University. Yeah. Okay. So in this way, he also preached worldwide i mean he said you said he was a, so for which mm, personalities in the parampara do we use the prerajic acharyas and for which we don't use the prerajic acharya well paramahansa we you can use it for all the acharyas there in the land the prerajic acharya kind of yeah, if you want yeah because like norkishore das babaji preached through bhakti siddhanta then Yes, Gorkishore Das Bhandati, Paramahamsa, Paramahamsa, Paribrajak Acharya. Paribrajak Acharya. There's different stages of sannyas, of renunciation. There's Bahudak, Kutichak, Parama, Paribrajak Acharya, and Paramahamsa. There's four different stages of sannyas. Uh, Kuti Chak is the person who first taking renunciation. He will live near the home and from the home they will send food to him every day. Mm. Yeah. And then Kuti Chak, then next stage is they go away from the home. And, they, and the home will, will maybe send, send food after him. Or they'll arrange someone to go with him to cook for him. Or something. And then 
Paribrajak Acharya is the one who goes everywhere preaching. Yeah. And Paramahamsa is the one, well, Paramahamsa means one who, like a swan, Hamsa, mm -hmm. supreme swan. Paramahamsa, supreme swan. The swan knows the art to separate milk from water. And so the Paramahamsa, he can be anywhere, he can stay anywhere and he can be absorbed and transcended. Paramahamsa, sometimes they won't travel, they just stay where they are. No need to travel anywhere. They just, Bhaktivinoda Thakur at the end of his life, he just stayed in Jagannath Puri. He just stayed there. He didn't move around. But then like, if these are the stages of sannyas, then for both Shiva Das Babaji and for Jagannath Das Babaji, you won't use the name. Paramahamsa until the end of the child, because they were not sannyas. Who? Gorky Shardas Babaji and Jagannath Das Babaji. They're higher than sannyas. They're so Babaji. We can use these titles anyway. Yeah, they're higher than sannyasis. Sannyasis is a, that's a material designation. Mm -hmm. Babaji's are above that. Yeah. That is why we don't have Babaji's today in our society because it's a very, very advanced stage. There was one time, one time, Prabhupada initiated one boy as a Babaji. Oh, a disciple? Yeah. It happened, it was like 1976, it was this one boy. What happened was, he came from America and he came with all the Western devotees, they came from the USA. And they brought this one boy to Prabhupada and they told Prabhupada, they said, Srila Prabhupada, he said, this boy is going to die. He's got some disease and doctor told him he's going to die. He doesn't have long to live. But, but he's going around to the colleges and he's preaching to people and he's telling them that I'm preparing for death. I'm going to, I've got the disease, I'm going to leave the body soon. And, I'm, and, he, I'm and he would tell them, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, I'm preparing myself for my departure. This is how to use the human life. And he was telling them, he was preaching. So they said to Prabhupada, they said, Prabhupada, it would be good, could you give him sannyas? Could he get, become a sannyasi? And Prabhupada said, well, he said, if he's going to die, that's not very good for sannyas. That's not a reason to give someone sannyas this person is going to die. But he said, what he can do is, we can give him Babaji initiation. He can be a Babaji. And he can just sit and chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's Babaji. Babaji's usually they don't preach. They just sit and chant. Mm -hmm. They don't go anywhere, they just chant. Like Gorky showed us Babaji, uh, Gorkishore Das Babaji had an eye problem. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati wanted to take him to Calcutta. He said, I will not go to the material world. He refused to leave my, my uncle. He said, I will not go to the material world. But Babaji, they, they just want to stay, they just chant, just do their bhajan. Their bhajan anandis. There's ghost of anandis and bhajan anandis. Mm -hmm. Ghost of Anandis are preachers. <coughs> the bhajan Anandis are just doing their bhajan, yes. chanting all day, every day, 64 rounds, and absorbed in chant, absorbed in Krishna Lila. So, Gorky Shore Das Babaji, Jagannath Das Babaji, even Bhaktivinoda Thakur at the end of his life, he also took Babaji initiation. Where they just chant, just chant. So that they wear white, that shows their trans. This saffron dress means you're still in the material world. This means the material world. You have you're designated as being in the material world. Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyas. These are all material designations. Ashram of the material world. But Babaji's, they're transient, they're above all that. Hmm? Yes. 
So white, that's the, the white, the white means Paramahamsa. The topmost position. So Paribraja Kacharya, they pre go, go everywhere preaching. Yes. Jai Vishnu Pat Paramahamsa Gauri Vapacharya Shri Krishna Sitsunath Sivanti Bhakti Vidanta and Bhakti Siddhanta. Those are the Paragraphs. Vishnu Pat Paramahamsa Gauri Vapacharya Shri Krishna Sitsunath Sivanti Bhakti Vidanta and Bhakti Siddhanta. Those are the Paragraphs. Sorry? Vishnu Pat Paramahamsa Gauri Vapacharya Shri Krishna Sitsunath Sivanti Bhakti Vidanta and Bhakti Siddhanta. Those are the Paragraphs. His divine grace. Yeah. His divine grace. Who goes to that? Satchit Ananda, Bhakti Vinod Shri Chai. Okay. Any other questions? No questions. So we'll chant Hare Krishna for a little.